Outlook Base in Trondheim. On October 19th, the British intercepts another transmission, honoring Furster and his achievements. Earlier in the war, U-boat captains were awarded the Knight's Cross for sinking over 100,000 tons of shipping. But by 1944, many commanders received the same prestigious medal for sinking a fraction of that tonnage. Furster is no exception. Horst Rösner remembers the crew's sense of elation and relief as they returned to port. And the best moment of all was when we came back from our mission. Pennons were flying and merchant ships dipped their flags to greet us. In the U-boat bunker, there was a band waiting and a newsreel crew. One of the press said, can I take your picture? And I said, okay, but only if I get a copy. And I've still got it, with one of the finest beards you've ever seen. That really was the best moment of my time in U-boats, coming home. U-480's crew would soon set out on another mission, but Horst doesn't join them this time. <laughs> he volunteers for the next voyage. But when he returns from leave, he learns that a woman has been on board. And for submariners, that's perceived as bad luck. You what sailors are superstitious people. Oh, what shall I do? I go to see the skipper who's busy shaving. He says, So, my old mate, are you getting off this boat or what? And I said, Yes. And that was my salvation. U-480 has proved her worth. Her stealth technology made her invisible. So how did the Allies hunt her down and kill her? In August 1944, German U-boat commander Hans Joachim Furster destroys four Allied ships in the English Channel. Once rearmed and refueled, U-480 returns to the fray. In January 1945, Furster and his crew depart Norway for the west coast of Ireland. On the 19th, British intelligence intercepts a transmission and learns of Furster's orders to return to the English Channel. Large American troop transports coming from USA, apparently expected in Cherbourg, go to your old operational area. U-480 returns to her old haunts, taking her past the Isle of Scilly. Allied warships destroy another German U-boat in that area around the same time. Floating remains convince the Allies they've sunk the notorious U-480. Well, the items that came to the surface at this attack was a piece of white crepe rubber. And I think this led the assessment committee at the Admiralty to believe that the U-boat so destroyed was U-480 because they knew that U-480 was coated in rubber. For 50 years, the wreckage was thought to be lying here. But in fact, U-480 moves undetected to her old hunting ground. The rubber cloak of invisibility is still effective. Normally, U-boats keep radio silence during combat because it's too dangerous to transmit at the surface. But they take a chance, and their messages are intercepted by the British. A 
machine known as the bomb can exploit weaknesses in the German Enigma encoder and is able to decipher Furster's messages in less than 24 hours. The intercepts contain details of each U-boat's progress, her state of readiness, ammunition, supplies, and mission reports. Over 50 intercepts of U-480's reports are still preserved today. The intercepts are far and few. To transmit a signal, U-480 had to break the surface, where she became vulnerable to Allied ships and aircraft. But for most of her mission, she maintains radio silence, so what led to her demise? Navigating through the restricted view of the periscope is difficult, but Commander Furster has a plan. If the U-boat could get himself in a position off, say, a navigational buoy that he would have at least assumed was on the main convoy routes, and he then bottoms near there so he won't be dragged away from it, then when he he uh, waits for a short period of time. In principle, at least, a convoy should come clomping along. He'll hear it, rise to firing position, fire, and then go back to the bottom again. But Furster returns to the scene of his previous triumphs. But what would be more natural uh, for a, a young submarine captain who's been successful on one patrol to want to go back and do the same in an area that he knew? So, of course, he goes back to the old convoy lane that he'd plied so well a few months before, but things have changed. For 60 years, details of these changes have been kept a secret. Today, these declassified documents disclose the truth. At the Royal Naval Historical Branch, Innes McCartney and Naval historian Malcolm Llewellyn Jones uncover a critical lead. Near U-480's wreckage lies the evidence of a trap. A covert minefield aimed at submarines was laid in this area in January 1945. It allows us then to target mine laying. And uh, is a successful strategy. Yes. The mines themselves were deep enough for Allied ships to travel safely over the top. Some explode on contact. Others detonate if a submarine passes near them. What the Allies did was reroute the convoys to another way into Portsmouth and lay a minefield under the old convoy route, leaving the marker boys in place. Furster has little choice but to follow the marker buoys. Aware of the dangers posed by an air or sea attack, the crew has faith in their rubber cloak of invisibility. Little do they know, a secret minefield is waiting for them. The expedition team is determined to find out what happened to World War II German submarine U-480. Starting back here, we can see the uh, stern broken off. Detailed scans reveal that the submarine was struck at her stern. As the divers search the wreckage, they discover evidence of the fatal impact that killed Furster and his crew. 
frightening looking uh, shattering of the pressure hull uh, right on the aft starboard side. It looks just like uh, someone stuck a pencil into a Coke can. And it's just completely pushed the pressure, shattered it and allowed tons of water per second to pour into the submarine and it's done for it in a few seconds. It is a horrific picture of the last seconds of a submarine in war. Five hundred pounds of explosives blows through the reinforced steel of the pressure hull. There's no chance of escape. At the German Naval Memorial, Innes meets with Horst Rösner to share his findings. And we went down and we dived it, and we found a submarine. For the first time, Innes is able to convey what happened to Rösner's fallen comrades 60 years ago. Near Kiel, Germany, a memorial honors the 30,000 men who lost their lives serving in U-boats during World War II. Horst Rösner's comrades are among them. But for a sailor superstition, his name would be here too. Man sieht sie vor sich. Wenn ich die Namen höre, dann ist es als wenn er neben mir steht. When I hear their names, I can see them in front of me. It's as if they are standing right next to me. We shared happiness and suffering. We had good times and bad times. While I'm alive, you'll never be forgotten. You did your duty. The events of 1944 still leave their mark today. You do have dreams sometimes that are very real to you, but they don't always last. I had a little spell of it, but it's, I'm okay now, I think. You know, it wouldn't be very good if you had to keep thinking about it. It's happening and it's happened to a lot of people that were in the war. Sixty years after U-480 fell to the bottom of the English Channel, Divers and historians have uncovered the German weapon that sank four Allied ships in 1944. The submarine's demise came when it entered a deadly trap deep beneath the waves. U-480's story is one of wartime trickery and bravery. The Germans brought six more stealth submarines into service, and not a single one was ever detected by sonar.